Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review of another 80s horror movie. And this time, I'm talking about The Bean. Now, The Bean, I don't think it's going to be one of those films that a lot of people like. But I like it. I, I'm a sucker for this kind of film. These kind of 80s monster movies. Now, this is directed by Jackie Kahn. Now, if Jackie Kahn sounds familiar, this is the same person that would direct Blood Diner. Now, this film is nowhere near as crazy as Blood Diner. But this is a film that... I remember this cover when I was a kid. I was on a farm... We had two small towns and one each one this is a town where VHS tapes was everywhere, including little gas stations, grocery stores, wherever. And I looked and I looked and down the hallway was this cover, which I always thought was creepy. I mean imagine like being a little kid and seeing something like this. And this figure holding this guy who's all fucked up, <laughs> ravaged and just hanging on like a doll to this poor some bitch. And you, you see it far away, like, what the hell is that? And just being creeped out that I didn't see the movie. Now, the movie's not nearly as creepy as, as that. But was till many, many years later, finally saw it. And I'm like, you know what? It has its issues, its problems, but I liked it. I, I liked the creature design. I know a lot don't, but the sort of cyclops amalgamation, fucked up beyond all repair type of being. I mean, it's, it's a perfect word, the being. I liked it. It's kind of like a an 80s take on a 50s movie. If that made sense. Uh, I know that the movie does have this sort of muddy, dark look. And a lot of people don't like that. This one, I, I did. I enjoyed the look of it. And I could see enough that I wasn't confused. I wasn't like, what happened? What happened that? I could see enough. But the muddy, dark look, I, I thought, had a bit of an appeal in this situation. <clears throat> and this also has a little couple of eccentric themes I mean it begins with a narrator who I swear is trying so hard to sound like Rod Serling from Twilight Zone the fact that it takes place in Pottsville, Idaho I mean how many fucking films take place in Idaho <laughs> let alone monster movies And it had a couple decent bits of gore. I mean, early on, a guy's head gets ripped off, which I thought was pretty gore and fun to see. Another guy, like a, a cop, gets his heart ripped out from the from the back. Like he's in his car, and then the hand comes out, ripping the heart out. I thought that was a cool gory kill. A Martin Landau, which granted him... This is one of his, uh, this is way before he would get the Academy notices for Ed Wood as playing Bela Lugosi. This is when he was doing these kind of films like Alone in the Dark in 1982 and Without Warning in 1980. I do try to wish in retrospect he was the lead of the film. He's definitely the better, the best actor in the movie. I would say the main problem I have with the film is the lead guy. He's there, but he's not good. Like I could deal with him. I could deal with him. But he's not that good. He, uh, the lead is this cop. Is played by Bill Osco, which is funny because in the end credits he has two different names. People are like, what do you mean two different names? 
they do the end credits twice. They do the end credits where they show the person's face and then the name underneath. And then they do the credits that go up. Both times, the actor has a different name. <laughs> One of them is like Rex Coltrane, which is obviously a fake name. And neither one was his real name. Like, they were both fake names. His actual name is Bill Osco, who was the producer of this film. And I think he was going out with Jackie Khan. I could be wrong. And Bill Osco, I've seen worse, but I would have picked a better actor. I mean, Wayne's Hauser, who would do a good job in... Mutant, which I'll talk I've talked about in the past, but actually here This film Wayne's Hauser Which is why although I like this film I would say this film is better Does he have a strong guy like Wayne's Hauser a strong actor? James Woods would have been fun that would never happen I mean he was doing video drum around this time, but that would have been fun, a James Woods type or Dennis Quaid type. But he did Jaws 3, so if he did Jaws 3, he could do a film like this. Or a Kevin Bacon type or a Ed Harris type. Uh, God, I'm trying to think now. I mentioned Ed Harris because he was in Creep Show like a year before. Kevin Bacon just a few years before he was in Friday the 13th. Just multiple other actors. And they would have been better than this guy. I mean, he... There's a moment at the third act of the film where he's like yelling at the creature. He's like, I'll get you, you son of a bitch. Ah, you're going down. <laughs> it just made me laugh. And that wasn't the point. He was supposed to be tough, but it's just like, so, I mean, it, it entertained me, but it's just, you tell he's not, acting is not his job. He's, like, stick to producing. Again, I've seen, be I've seen much worse, but, you know, I would have picked a better actor. So, he's, yeah, I'll deal with them, but, yeah. So, I mean, the movie itself, it plays like a you know, creature feature. Anywhere it goes, it leaves this sludge, this ooze, this slime everywhere. Kills a couple people in a drive, uh, driving movie theater. One thing I gotta mention, there's a part where the creature grabs the, the lead's leg. And he runs out. I thought, watch it. This is a pretty dangerous stunt. Because you know, it cuts to the cop running. And then there's a train coming. As I tell you, cop running, train coming, cop running, train coming. Then they cut to a shot where the guy literally runs over the tracks as a real train. It's like this far away from the guy. And you see in, you see in the same shot, you know, the guy... Flip, and then the train, phew. and I'm like, wow, that's a really dangerous stunt. And I give credit, I don't know if Bill Ostro or Stuntman did that, whoever did I, I, you have to give credit where credit is due. I mean, you have to have my ass running to cross a train that's that close to me. <laughs> also, other oddities, there's a flashback, like, not a flight, but like a weird dream scene where the cop, it's in black and white, and he's in a plane with Marlon Landau, and the creature smashes the window of the plane and drags Martin Lando out, and then like you know, he's trying to land the plane, and he sees this woman with blood on her face. Like a weird, surreal dream, and it's like, where where is this coming from? <laughs> but okay, I mean, it was, it, it was kind of interesting. Well, it was unexpected. I always forget this actually takes place in Easter. So one of those few Easter horror films like Critters 2 
because there's a point where these little kids are trying to get these eggs. And this is kid, very cute little kid. And, you know, I, I think it's a little girl. She's trying to get this egg and this little hole and you have this funky arm. And like she's trying to reach in and like she's kind of like doing this. It was, I thought it was a cute little kid. They didn't make her annoying by whining, crying, but and they didn't do anything to the kid either. In this case, he uh, so people like, oh fuck kids, do the kill the kid. No, here is she was. She, um, I thought that was a decent suspense scene. Not, I mean, I knew they weren't going to kill the kid, but I just thought the way it was handled was decent on a suspense level. Uh, that's just how I viewed it. So I like that little scene there. I like the look of the creature. Uh, I like that the creature at times has this little tendril thing. At one point like grabs a, a guy and drags him through a glass window. Uh, the cast. Oh, Jose Ferrer is in this as the mayor. Is it Mar Landau? He's... He's pretty much like a chemist and he's a guy who knows and about the toxic waste being dumped and that's where this bean came from is that a person got mixed up with the toxic waste just as toxic waste being dumped and changed into this bean figure. And the finale was a old fashioned monster flick where your hero is going after the creature and I thought that was fairly decent again with a different actor I think it would have been even better and yeah I, I could tell this would be a film not a lot of people would like but like I said, these 80s monster movies, are, I'm a sucker for them. Whether it be this or Mutant or Chud or many other films. Which, yeah, I would put Chud and Mutant above this, but still. Like Creature from 1985, which I'll get to. So I, I like the being. And I like the look of the being. They, they have him enough shadow that you don't see all the teams. But I always thought this is kind of a really e funky, like, I wouldn't say creepy, but I just, I like the look of that creature. Yeah, I always thought it's like pretty decently cool old school, like, take a 50s monster updated for 80s type of design. At least for the low budget that they have, but yeah, that's just me. But yeah, I mean, it, it, the movie was short enough that it didn't bore me that much. Like I said, a couple of good cool gore moments. I wish this had features, Sally, no features. At least like an interview or comment over Jackie Khan or, you know, Bill Osco since he starred in the thing. Yeah. That's just my thoughts on the bean. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you in the next review. Later.